making the not so obvious obvious. This video is part of Shut Up and Shoot, that famous ebook, you know, the one you should be getting now. Howdy, everybody. Uh, this tutorial is part one of a three part series in Adobe After Effects, and it's going to show you, a, in this first part, a very simple process of how to bring in a JPEG image sequence and process it through the Adobe Camera Raw processor prior to doing anything with it. And this is a really cool feature that very few people really understand or know about, but it will help improve the quality of your image sequence nicely. So here we are at the opening screen of Adobe After Effects, and this is basically your, your greeting screen where it offers you to open up recent projects, etc. However, we really don't want to do any of this because we don't know how long the image sequence is. If I were to go and start a new composition, it would be problematic because I would have to first go back and see and count how many uh, frames, which each image would be equal to one frame, there are, and hence figure out what the length of the composition is going to be. But then if I change my frame rate, that screws everything up again because that would change the number of seconds. So 24 frames per second versus 30 frames per second will make a difference. So I'm going to show you a little shortcut and a dirty trick that I've been using for several years now to make my life easier. So I'm just going to close this and I'm going to shrink down Adobe After Effects so you guys can see the full screen. Alrighty, so here we are, Adobe After Effects, new project, totally clean. All I need to do is go into my project window and double click. And uh, I've already set this to go to a directory. Of course, you can uh, go through your directory tree to find your image sequence. And I have quite a few image sequences here. I have various segments, and you'll notice that in these directories I have both the CR2 which is the camera raw version of this image which would be a standard JPEG and I shot everything at super high res so the highest res on the camera 5184 by 3456 and I'll explain in detail why that is in any case I'm gonna go back to the one that I've set up as you'll notice here, I've separated out the JPEGs from the RAW files, and I'm looking at the detail structure of the directory, and that's easily done in Windows. On the Mac, I'm not sure how you do that because I'm a Windows guy. But in any case, I can go to large icons, and now I have the icons, and if I go into my folder, I have the big pictures. Or I can go into details and actually see some other interesting information. I do want to point out, if you look at your JPEGs, for example, this image here is 6,661 kilobytes versus the same image in RAW. It is four times, almost four times the size. So something to make a note of. When you have JPEGs versus RAW, you are going to see compressed versus total RAW data. So there's a lot more information in these files and if possible you want to process these and that's covered in another tutorial how to handle the raw. But for right now I want to show how we can use JPEG pictures and still process them using the Adobe raw processor which is really cool because it gives you a bit of leeway to play with that picture and adjust and maybe make it sharper or better or more colorful bring up the saturation which is really nice and that's all before you even bring it into After Effects so here we go we're gonna grab the first image and just so you uh, see that I'm gonna turn it back on the large icons you'll notice and this is very important the image numerical sequence has to be in order in order for any program not just Adobe After Effects to be able to load the sequence so here we start at 2683 and it goes down all the way to 3064. So there's quite a few images in there. 
but I don't really care how many there are because it doesn't matter for the purpose of this it really doesn't and you'll see why in a second in any case uh, Adobe wants to bring in a JPEG sequence by default because it's a JPEG image it wants to import it as footage and the format is JPEG well that's all great and dandy but how do I get it in so that I can load it as a raw processable file and this is where it's really cool and this is not really documented that well any place I found one tutorial online a couple of years ago and I started using that and I was just blown away at what you could do so I'm gonna show you now and share my little secret so here we have the files of type and it comes back as all acceptable files because that's the default what I'm going to do is I'm going to fool After Effects and I'm going to say bring in all files or show me all the files now you'll notice under format I no longer just have JPEG I actually have a pull down here where I can pick a variety what I'm really after is this it's called camera raw so I'm going to set that to camera raw and now it's gonna bring it in as a camera raw sequence and this is pretty cool because how can you bring in JPEGs as a camera raw sequence that's unheard of well you're about to see all I gotta do now is click open and within a couple of seconds we now have the Adobe raw processor loaded and you'll notice I've already worked on this image the objective was to get this to uh, either be a little more saturated or colored so I've adjusted the saturation because I shoot flat with the camera so if I take the saturation down obviously it's black and white now or grayscale so I'm gonna boost the saturation a little bit and if if I click on default this is what it looked like before and really that's not too bad uh, however I know for a fact that this was a tad bit underexposed because I shot it a little bit underexposed on a pretense that the Sun was rising and the whole imagery was going to get a lot brighter so I wanted enough time to show the blossoms opening up so learning camera settings is another thing that you really need to focus on when you shoot time-lapse sequences of this nature but in any case I'm going to do a control Z and go back to what I, my settings were the object of the game is and uh, unfortunately you can't see it on these screens but there's two triangles in this little histogram window and one is highlight clipping and the other one is shadow clipping and if possible you want to get those both to become black triangles by making various adjustments so now I'm just going to make a little teeny adjustment here because I saw a little too much green however the clipping doesn't agree with me even though I see a little too much green so the reason is we have a lot of green cactus here and there's some spots in here where it may shadow clip on the greens but it doesn't matter to me what I wanted was to get the right color balance to make it look a little bit more natural so as, learn about how all these settings work you, there's a lot of tutorials on this stuff there's a lot of books on this stuff on how to process and use the Adobe raw processor many many features and functions that you can take care of right now now the cool thing is if you do it to the first image it will automatically when you load the sequence transpose all this information to all the images so you will be good to go I'm just gonna click OK and now Adobe has brought in the sequence for me this is awesome it's done it shows me that I have 12 seconds and 22 frames if I go at 30 frames per second one of the things I want to do right away is I want to go to interpret footage by right clicking on the file go to main and I'm going to change this to match the specification for NTSC so I'm going to put in 29.97 frames per second as opposed to a solid 30 now it didn't change much here because this is a fairly short clip but if this was a long clip yes you'd get a couple of frame drops etc now we're set ready to rock and roll 
and we are ready to create some footage from this file. So stay tuned for the next uh, part of this series, which talks about how we're going to set up various files, formats, etc. So stay tuned. See you in a few minutes. Thanks for watching.